You can learn a lot about the history and diversity of Latin America from his boots. Do not tell your mother I told you that. Yo, Wampa, what you doing? I'm studying Latin America history, man. What you think I'm doing? Really? Yeah. I learned a lot about Italian immigration to Argentina from Fernet. Now, did you know? Historians say Mojito was discovered by sailors in Cuba who were trying to find a cure for scurvy. So if you got scurvy, I got you. And last but not least, I also learned Bolivia's mountainous climate is the only place in the world to grow the grape to produce this very rare liquor called Singani. This magical liquor could be the next worldwide trend of cocktail. Check it out. What do do? Can I study with you? Of course, but responsablemente. Latin America's drinks aren't only delicious and amazing, and you have a great night. They also provide a taste of our history, diversity, and even our geography. Take tequila, right? The national liquor of my home country, Mexico. Tequila is actually a type of mezcal made from the agave plant, which only grows in certain hot and dry areas of Mexico. What we know as tequila is a special type of mezcal because it can only be made from the Blue Weber agave plant that grows in the region surrounding the town of tequila. You know how scotch is whiskey that comes from Scotland? Well, tequila is mezcal that comes from tequila. <laughs> Tell that one to anybody at your next cocktail party and they will think you are a genius. You're welcome. And according to legend, ooh, tequila was created when a lightning bolt struck an agave plant high above a mountain. The nectar flowed from the plant, and members of the local Nahua tribe tasted the holy concoction, and bam, tequila was born. But maybe do not say this one at the cocktail party because it's just a legend. Facts always play well. But back to the actual history. Tequila was actually created by the Spanish conquistadores who came to Mexico bringing death and destruction, but also destillation. Generations of Mexicans refined these techniques to develop the tequila we know and love today. More than 500 years later, people in the US consume 50 million liters of this mashup of Spanish and indigenous culture. 50 million liters of tequila. That could kill Thanos. Anywho, thousands of years before there was even tequila, there was pulque. Pulque, which was kind of like a beer that Mesoamerican people made from the sap of the agave plant. Now, the interesting part about pulque is that the fermentation process makes it make you kaponka dengue dengue wango. Okay, there's another legend here, which is that the Aztec deity Quetzalcoatl created pulque to lift people's spirits up because he noticed they seemed kind of bummed after working all day. <clears throat> that actually sounds legit. And there are stories like this all across Latin America. Take Gifiti, another drink born out of an incredible story of perseverance and cultural mashup. When the British took over the Caribbean island of St. Vincent, they saw the Garifuna people to Honduras. Garifuna were descendants of escaped African slaves and indigenous Caribbean people. It was in Honduras where Gifiti was perfected by the Garifuna people using native herbs, roots, and local rum. Hundreds of years later, Gifiri is now one of the most popular drinks in Honduras. It's as clear as the Aguardiente brewed in Colombia. Latinos have made the most of the beauty and tragedy that history has thrown at them to create some of the most distinctive flavors in the world. So, the next time somebody offers you a bottle of tequila, mezcal, gifiri, singani, pisco, guaro, you toast for the perseverance of the Latin people. Arriba, abajo, al centro, pa' dentro. It's only paper. I call this a shakalaka. Shakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Mm.